Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I don't know yet. Yeah, I mean, I guess let's see where where we are next Monday, and then we'll make a decision. I think, I mean, I just, I want to, uh, I want you guys to work this homework assignment and, and have time to grade it and get it back to you before the exam. That's the main thing. Um, but the exam will be in class, uh, so it'll just be in, in place of one of the classes that week. Okay. So we were talking about, uh, we were starting to talk about our first application and that is we're, we want to know or use our knowledge of stress and pore pressure to determine if a fault will slip or not. We know that stress is a coordinate frame dependent quantity, right? And we know that the easiest way to quantify stress is through the principal stresses and directions, because those are going to be the ones that are easiest to measure. And they can be arbitrarily oriented with respect to the geographic frame or a geographic frame, and certainly with respect to a fault. Right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the principal stresses and rotate them, or you might say unrotate them, into the geographic frame. Because our geographic frame is going to be sort of the frame in, in which everything else is um, denoted with respect to. Right? And so uh, there's, there's several ways you can do the rotations. Um, all of them will end up valid. Uh, the one we're going to use in, in this class, and when I say do the rotations, I mean how you define the angles and in what order you do the rotations. All of them would end up with a valid sort of rotation matrix. Uh, but this is the one we're going to use here, right? So we talked last time about, you know, our northeast down coordinate system. That's our geographic frame. And, and then our principal stresses are going to be arbitrarily oriented. And we're going to unrotate them, if you will, back into the geographic frame. And so uh, when we design or when we write down, derive the rotation matrix, what we're going to do is we're going to look at each of these angles in isolation. So there's three angles, alpha, beta, gamma. And we're going to look at each of them in isolation and sort of perform one rotation at a time. And I think that helps to, so that you can see sort of which plane the rotation's done in. Because a lot of people, when they look at this figure, can't have a lot of trouble figuring out sort of which angle is which. And in fact, um, you know, once we get through this and you you write yourself a little script in, in MATLAB to do the to perform the the calculations for you, this is the hardest part. I mean it's it's really the only part of the problem is understanding which angle is which so that you can perform the rotations correctly. Okay? And so what we're gonna do is we'll perform three rotations in isolation. So the first one we're gonna do is we're going to look at alpha, right? So alpha, imagine in your mind that beta and gamma are zero. So that S1 lays in the plane of north and east, right? Also S2 also would lay in the plane of north and east if those angles are, are, are zero, right? And so we're going to look at the rotation alpha, which would basically is, is traced by this line right here. If, if those angles are zero, this red line would be right there on that dashed line, and we're looking at that rotation, okay? So we have north and east. And then we have S1 and S2, and this is the angle alpha. So maybe, should I?
Use a different color for these. Okay. So everybody see where that comes from, right? If beta and gamma are zero, and we're looking for, we're you know, looking down on the northeast plane. S1 and S2 are in that plane. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's always going to be from the angle is defined as it's drawn there from north. Yeah, exactly. All right. So when we talk about rotations, you know, um, earlier in the class, you know, we had like a, a, a x y frame, and we we wanted to rotate it into x prime y prime frame, right? And so in that example, our northeast would be our x y, and the other one would be s one s two would be the x prime y prime example. And in that example, we wrote x prime in terms of x and y x x prime in terms of x and y, and y prime in terms of x and y, right? So we, we wrote the rotated coordinate in terms of the unrotated. In this case, we're going to do the opposite thing here. We're going to write the unrotated in terms of the rotated. And so this is, gives us that sort of unrotation, if you will. And so all of our angles, because we're, we're sort of unrotating the S1, S2 back into the northeast, so all of our angles are going to be negative alpha. So we're going to write the north is S1 cosine minus alpha minus S2 sine minus alpha. East is S1 sine minus alpha plus S2, S2 cosine. Minus alpha. And then, just to be complete, we'll say that down is S3. So they're down is into the board, S3 is into the board. And so if we write that then in, in matrix form, Call this R1. Right. So I know the minus alphas are a little strange, but again, it's because we're we're, we're sort of doing the opposite as what we did last time. We're we're, we're writing the the unrotated. We're writing the the rotated components in in the unrotated frame, and so we're sort of unrotating S1, S2 back into north and east. Okay. So the next rotation we're going to do is about beta. So let's go back and look at this guy. Now what you want to do is imagine uh, that alpha and gamma are zero, and and look at the rotation of beta. So rotate the beta. If alpha and gamma are zero, then S1 and north are aligned and S2 and east are aligned, and the rotation is about east, right? So beta is a right, and remember, right hand rule, right? So use your right hand. If you want to, there's three independent rotations. Maybe I should have said that for alpha, right? So 
the, the rotation of alpha is about down. So I'm going to stick my thumb in the down direction on my right hand and curl my fingers, and that's positive alpha. Right? So same thing here. I'm going to stick my thumb in the direction of east and curl my fingers, and that's positive beta. Right? So that would, is going to initially S1 and north would be aligned, and if I rotate beta, I'm going to lift S1 sort of into the air. Right? And so. North, down, S1, S3, this is beta. All right, so can everybody, can everybody see that? So now we're in the plane of north down, rotating about east. Yes. Well, in, in this case, uh, it's out of the paper. Just to be make sure you're. Um, so then. Um, well, I'll, I'll write the components. So north is S1 cosine minus beta plus S3 sine minus beta. East is equal to S2. Down is equal to minus S1. So then if we write that in matrix form, So then our last rotation is three independent rotations, right? So we've, we've done a rotation about down. That was alpha. We've done a rotation about east. That's beta. What do you think our next rotation is? About north, right? So if I stick my right hand thumb in the direction of north and curl my fingers, that's a positive gamma, right? Which in this case, the way it's drawn, you sort of have to imagine curling your hand all the way around, right? So, but that's positive gamma. Right? So, uh, so this this rotation is in the plane of east down. Initially, when they're all zero, S two will be in the direction of east, and a positive rotation in gamma will sweep S two down. <laughs> yeah. Well, because. It, each, remember I said, we're, we're going to do each, um, each rotation in isolation, right? So imagine the other angles are zero. In that case, if, if, if you start and all the angles are zero, S1 lines with north, S2 lines with east, and S3 lines with down, right? So in the case of beta that we just did, I'm, you know, put my thumb in the direction of east, S2 is also in the direction of east. And then I do the rotation. I don't change S2. S1 and S3 rotate, but S2 is still in the direction of east. It, 
when they're all zero, they're, the two coordinate frames are perfectly aligned with one another. Okay, so our last one is in the plane of east down. And we have S2 and S3, and this is gamma. And so I'm just going to write down the matrix form directly for this one. Call that R three. All right. So then our total rotation matrix, which we're going to call R G. Right. R G for geographic. Right. This is going to be the the complete rotation matrix that for any arbitrary alpha, beta, and gamma takes any arbitrary S1, S2, S3 directions and rotates them into the geographic frame. Right. And so that's going to be equal to R3 times R2 times R1. Right. And I don't like to do matrix math by hand. So let's open Mathematica. Oops. Make a mistake here, typing it in. So it went ahead and fixed my signs, right? The, the cosine of alpha and the cosine of minus alpha is the same, and the, just like the minus sine minus alpha is the same as sine alpha. And so it, it went ahead and simplified things for me. So that's R1. I don't know what would be faster. Let's see.
There's R2. Door three. Did I make a mistake? Okay. So then RG is going to be equal to R3, R2, R1. So that's the complete rotation matrix. And you see why I didn't want to. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? I don't, I don't understand. Well, no, see, I entered them. I entered them just as we wrote them down. Negative. It just did the simplification, right? The cosine of, of gamma is the same thing as the cosine of minus gamma. Yeah, but you're just doing the numbers. You're just taking the cosine of minus gamma. This works. <laughs> it, I mean, I, I don't really understand your question. This this is right. Yeah. I mean, th th those are those are the positive. Uh, As defined there, those angles will it'll work correctly. So, uh, so there's the the final matrix uh, should be the same. It's Uh, the, we know one of them will be down. We don't. We don't know if it's S one, S two, or S three. That depends on the faulting regime, right? Huh? Okay. Right. Normal faulting, strike slip faulting, reverse faulting. They have different. You know, the vertical stress is either for normal faulting is the greatest, right? In that case, it's S one. Okay. So imagine that. Uh, Right? So the rotation, yeah, so one of the rotations will always be like 90 because or, or minus 90 to get it to get it down, but it you know you, you may have to do a rotation where, in other words, when they're all zero, in in this using this definition, when they're all zero, S3 is down. But S3 may not be the vertical stress. S3 is only going to be the vertical stress when? In reverse faulting regime, right? So in a strike slip faulting regime, S2 would be the vertical stress. And S2, when they're all zero, is pointed east. So you'd have to do a gamma rotation of 90 degrees to get S2 down. Right? 
this concept of these angles may be the hardest part of the whole class. If you can get that, uh, then I think the whole class is going to be easy. 